let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price bear any burden meet any hardship support any friend oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you for that amazing story. Surrounding me is the new Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument, and what a great tribute it is to the veterans who have served. I'm just amazed at the detail in the sculptures, as well as the work ethic and everything that went into making this such a great venue. I'm Adam Murphy, and I'm here to tell you about how the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument came to be. And joining me now, two very important people, the mayor of Peachtree Corners, Mike Mason, and council member, Alex Wright. Greetings, gentlemen. Adam. Adam. So I understand this all came about from a conversation the two of you had back in 2015. What triggered the idea? There was a continuing conversation. Imagine back then when the town center was just a picture. It was just plans. And everybody was excited about, well, I want this restaurant here. Are we going to have a movie theater and things like that? Well, Alex and I are the two veterans. So we wanted some sort of a veterans monument or a memorial or something like that. But we really didn't get excited about it. We weren't really pushing it until Alex had a conversation one day. And I think it was at the YMCA. And then he came back and when he talked to me, that started everything. So actually, actually slightly before that, I was watching the uh, PBS as a thing on Memorial Day on the National Mall. I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's very moving. It's all about the stories of the veterans. And I was very moved by that. One morning I was leaving the Y trying to get to work. And Chris at the front said, Alex, does this guy I want you to meet? This guy in his 80s. And I thought, why does he want me to meet this guy? I'm in a big rush to get to work. I said, all right, Chris. And he introduces me to him. His name was Bill Lauterbach. It was right after World War II. And he had just graduated from Purdue University with a degree in electrical engineering. And while at Purdue, he was on their swim team. When the Korean War broke out, he volunteered for the Navy. He then served aboard the cruiser USS St. Paul, which saw combat throughout the war and was known for firing the last shot of the Korean War. What a fantastic story. There's people all around Peachtree Corners that have these incredible stories that none of us know about. And when these people pass away, how do we capture these stories? And that's when the conversation, you know, Mike and I had been talking and I called him up and I said, Listen, I know we've been talking about this Veterans Monument, but here's this idea I got. And we started talking about it. And as soon as Alex told me that, that got me excited and that's all it took to get us going. I had Judy Putton, our communications director, put out an email to ask veterans, are you interested? And would you be willing to come to a meeting up at City Hall and just talk about how we could organize that? Thank you for that great story, gentlemen. Oh, glad to Thank do it. You. And what an honorable challenge for a city that was only three years old at the time. Responding to the mayor's 2015 newsletter post, eight individuals responded and attended a meeting at City Hall. They were Mayor Mike Mason, Alex Wright, Tom Beatty, Emily Carley, Diana Wheeler, Doug Heckman, Bob Bala, and Judy Putnam. So the question on the table was, should we have a veterans monument in Peachtree Corners? And the people who all attended all agreed that we ought to have a veterans monument. 
Now we agreed on a couple of other things too. A monument, not a memorial. Uh, we wanted it to be in a highly visible place where people would go to it and see it. There was uh, agreement almost immediately to fund it privately and not through the city. The city could well afford it. But I said, you know, you get better community support if you ask the community to support it. And uh, so we, we decided at that meeting uh, to have a nonprofit organization fund this thing. We also decided what we wanted it to look like. We wanted it to, to uh, be a place where people could go think about service, uh, could contemplate other people's service, and that it would have some kind of interactive piece, at that point, undefined. But okay, if we're gonna do this in nonprofit, they voted me as the executive director, or president, or chairman, or whatever, the guy to put it together. And I said, okay, but all of you were on the board. So, our first board was, were the attendees at that meeting. By April, Frank Drury, a local CPA, was brought on board to serve as treasurer, and Shane Lanham, with the law firm Mahaffey, Pickens & Tucker, came on board to provide legal counsel. In June, Shane filed the incorporation documents for a nonprofit organization, and by July, the bylaws were approved. Shortly thereafter, the application for a 501c3 tax-exempt status was submitted. In July of 2015, the bank account was opened, resulting in the first donation. One of the first things we did, of course, open a bank account. And in uh, May or June of 2015, we walked into Piedmont Bank and sat down with Monty Watson and said, we'd like an open account here in Old Bank and Wake. We don't have any money. Can you fund it for us? So Bob Bala came into the bank, shared with me the story about what the plans were for the monument, uh, Veterans Monument for uh, Peachtree Corners, said that they needed a bank account for the money they were going to be collecting, and we were certainly happy to provide that account. Actually made a small contribution to the account as they opened it, and we were quite pleased to be involved with the project at that point. In July of 2015, the Peachtree Corners Business Association, which I am a member, had a uh, one of their mixer meetings over at the Q Barbecue, which newly opened. And at that meeting, they announced they were presenting a $500 donation to the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument, and they asked me to speak about it. So I spoke a little bit about what we envisioned a young man walked up to me, Taylor Hathaway. He's a, uh, an architect. He designed the interior of Q Barbecue. That's why he was there. Uh, he said, I will be happy to provide you with architectural support for as long as I can. So we now had an architect. Then in August, the logo was finalized, business cards were printed, and the website came online. The initial circular design for the monument came from Taylor Hathaway, a local architect and volunteer. Taylor's design had an eagle perched atop a pillar to serve as the central focal point of the monument. Three flagpoles flying the American, Georgia, and city flags would serve as a backdrop for the monument. In addition, plaques representing the military branches would be included. In September 2015, Chad Fisher, a renowned, nationally known sculptor of military bronze cast figures, was recommended by board member Emily Carley. We received an email from Emily. She suggested that we reach out to Bob because he's looking for a sculptor, for a monument, and that she knows that we have a strong interest in doing military and veteran statuary. I got on the phone with uh with Fran Fisher and his son Chad Fisher, who's the, the uh, sculptor, we talked about what we're interested in, and he said, well, look, I can do six sculptures for you. And I said, six? And he said, yeah, well, why don't we do one for each serviceman? Instead of having plaques, we, I was going into the conversation talking about an eagle. He said, instead of doing granite plaques, why don't we do a sculpture for each service? We'd mount those around the eagle in the center, and that would give you what you need uh, from a perspective point of view. So I fed that back to the architect. He sketched out some dynamics, and then a couple weeks later he said, this is really outside of my bailiwick. He provided us a final sketch, circular, but with the sculptures shown. The scope and complexity of the project, along with the cost, continued to grow, and due to the complexity, it was decided 
it was time to engage with an architectural design firm, one that was experienced with projects like this. Diana Wheeler, the Community Development Director for the City, suggested that it would save both time and money if the same designers for the town green were employed for the monument. Once the designers came on board, the location needed to be finalized. It was determined it needed to be accessible so the public could easily enjoy it. When Bob Bala uh, first came to TSW with his initial concept designs, and what we did was we made it more oval shape uh, just to give it a little bit more flexibility and breathing room. It's still traditional in the sense it's reflecting inwards. Give it a little bit more space and a, more of a modern take on the traditional circle design of a monument plaza. The change to an oval design also allowed for a seventh bronze figure to be added. Board member Tom Beatty suggested the seventh figure be an honor guard, depicted as a Minuteman, who would honor the National Guard, Reserves, and Merchant Marine. The board adopted Tom's suggestion. After several considerations, the mayor, the council, and the monument board all agreed the best place for the monument adjacent to the town green, the new community gathering place. Some of the challenges we ran into designing this space within a larger park, we wanted to make this a really special and unique place, but also integrated into the larger park and larger development. Um, so some of the challenges we're thinking about what are different ways we could do that. For marketing purposes, Peachtree Corners resident Kathy Espinosa drew the first artist rendering of the monument. The final monument design consists of a 2,500 square foot plaza and seven sculptures, a central pillar topped with an eagle atop the globe to represent the presence of the U.S. armed forces across the world, and six sculptures representing each of the armed forces and the federal military reserve components. Additional design elements include benches built into the outer wall and granite wall caps to be engraved with America's wars and significant military operations. As a way to further enhance fundraising and the visitor's experience, the board decided to sell engraved paver bricks. The bricks would allow purchasers to have the names of veterans engraved along with details about their military service. In the fall of 2015, an interactive component was added that included two kiosks and a smartphone app. The purpose of the interactive component is to provide information about the monument and also include links to additional details about the veterans of Peachtree Corners, along with a brick locator. Starting in October of 2018 and still continuing, each purchaser of a paver is invited to appear before a video camera and tell their veterans' personal story. The objective of merging traditional granite and bronze style monuments with modern technology is designed to enhance the overall experience for contemporary audiences. And by July of 2015, the fundraising committee was well underway, raising over $500,000 a substantial amount of money. And to everyone's delight, both the citizens and businesses here in Peachtree Corners have donated generously. In February of 2018, the fundraising organization Network for Good is contracted to ease the fundraising efforts and help with brick sales. In the spring of 2016, Tom Beatty committed to sponsoring the Marine, followed by Charlie Roberts sponsoring the Eagle and Doug Heckman, the Army soldier. In the spring of 2017, Susanna's Kitchen, which is located in Peachtree Corners, sponsored the interactive component. And two years later, Bob Cheeley sponsored the Air Force sculpture. Brad and Barbara Howard gave us the first big check. They donated for the chaos and software. But I will say that uh, Charlie Roberts said of all the things that he has given money to, uh, this one means the most to him and to the community. We worked the paver thing all along. We got a big surge in pavers after the 27th of April opening, by the way. Uh, April ended up with over $10,000 in donations, and so did May. 
We had a number of other, I, I call them the really dedicated volunteers that uh, turned them out for just about anything and, and really contributed. Ron Shook helped on with the fundraising, Tiffany and Mary Lou being the, the prime one. There are other people that, uh, that really contribute a lot. Help us honor our veterans. It will mean a lot to those who have served. Help us make the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument a success. Give us a hand. Support the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument. Buy a brick in honor of your special veteran. When it was all said and done, the community Peachtree Corners really came together to make this monument happen. During the fall of 2016, John Watkins, a local engineer, suggested a hardscape specialist was best suited to build the monument due to the type of construction required. I first came to know about the Veterans Monument from Bob because we were seeing them socially, good friends. I got involved in the monument. One of the reasons I did was my work experience. I am an engineer and had been involved a lot in my career in the design and then the construction projects all over the southeast. When the design was coming along, one of the things I advised Bob about, I said, well, you need to get a contractor selected pretty quickly so that they can look at the design before it's finished and make sure that what the landscape architect is designing can actually be constructed. Fortunately, a nationally known hardscape contractor, Kent Feuerbach, who lives in Peachtree Corners, was approached. After several meetings with Kent, it became apparent his knowledge of hardscape construction was perfect for the Veterans Monument and was ultimately awarded the building contract. Bob Bala, John Watkins, myself had numerous meetings to go over design plans. John's obviously an engineer and so forth. So the detail was a little bit more, you know, how to make, you know, square objects in an oval shaped monument and so forth and how to incorporate everything to make it fit and look good and seem like it belonged you know, in that area of this town center. What I think the architects did a great job, you know, everything kind of lays out in front of you. What they've done is they've taken these square monument or objects and they've put it in a formation that addresses you so it's there in front of you. We took it into consideration of structurally how to put this thing together because what you see on the outside is the granite and it looks strong and, and, and healthy and so forth, but inside the structure, you know, the foundation is what holds it all together. And we had to take into consideration how we're going to build this thing, how we're going to reinforce it with rebar and concrete and so forth so that it withstands not the test of time but the test of people in the general public. As financial contributions continued to grow, construction of the monument was able to begin. But Mother Nature wouldn't have it. With excessive rain, the project was delayed until October of 2018. We wanted to start the project prior to the monsoon. But we wanted to get that foundation in place. Delays were also encountered with the construction of the adjacent town green. A sea of Georgia red clay surrounded the entire construction site, but Kent Feuerbach persevered. Finally, a groundbreaking was able to occur in January of 2019. It was a beautiful, sunny, cold January day. The monument board, along with the donors and city officials, broke ground with the symbolic military entrenching tools. Following the groundbreaking, construction continued through January and February, dodging rain all the way. And the grand opening of the town center in green was scheduled for April 27, 2019, just two months away. By February 2019, the paver bricks began to arrive. We had to figure out a way to sort out our bricks and get them mapped uh, for, the, for the monument. And so we created an Eagle Scout project that, that Troy McGarren signed up for. To, uh, to do exactly that. So the first thing he did is we had 564 pavers ordered and he created a map to place those on the monument. The map's essential so that when you go to the monument and you look for a specific paver, you can just call it up on the app that we'll have available or on the kiosk that's on the monument itself or on the website. 
Well, I've been in the Scouts since I was in kindergarten, and I just recently achieved the rank of Eagle. And in doing that, I needed a community service project. And Mr. Bella just happened to be looking for help at the time I was offering it, and I thought it was a very unique and cool opportunity. As the April 27th Town Center grand opening approached, it became apparent that the sculptures would not be ready. Therefore, it was decided that the focus of the April 27th dedication would be to raise the three flags. The public was in attendance, while community organizations participated and provided ceremonial honors. The Town Center in Town Green grand opening event came off in magnificent fashion with thousands attending. The official dedication was scheduled for Saturday, June 15th, but as the 15th approached, the delayed arrival of the sculptures was of growing concern. Then on June 14th, one day before the dedication, the sculptures, along with Chad Fisher and his crew, arrived. Installation began immediately. to actually you know, climbing up on the scaffolding, ties to put around it to, to set the eagle and so forth, but, but to actually be on top of the monument, a little bit of a high, it was a good feeling. It was a special feeling of being able to set that big bird, that big eagle on the statue. And for me to do that, it kind of felt like a, 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 a completion. You know, that, that, okay, we've got this monument, put it together, and so forth. And here, I'm the one that gets to kind of cap it all off with the eagle at the top of this column. And it was a real feel-good moment for me. So I, I was real happy that I got it. First class, absolute first class, really nice. Well organized, well thought out. Someone took time from an aerial perspective to a ground perspective to plan this so there's sight lines going through so you can see the flagpoles, nothing's buried. The trees don't cover anything up. You can see the statues from 50 yards, 25 yards. You can probably see them from 100 yards. So uh, it was first class well thought out and um, pleasing to look at. I moved out towards uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. My wife is from that area. So. When I was about seven, we were always drawing. Uh, my father worked for the Philadelphia Inquirer as a political cartoonist. The arts were definitely a possibility for my future. 
when I went to college, uh, I studied at uh, Syracuse for illustration, then I transferred out and went to the University of Pennsylvania and the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art. I took a sculpture course. And from there, it just blossomed. It was, uh, that was, I knew that was my path. That centered me. Both of my grandfathers and uncles served. So my father's father served in World War II, was stationed in France. Uh, my grandfather was stationed in, uh, my mother's father was stationed in Germany. So with that, there was a strong influence of having some sort of um, country pride and knowing what the ultimate sacrifice is and what they've given. First military figure I did, uh, Wild Bill Garnier from the Band of Brothers right. series, the HBO series, uh, and that's in Philadelphia. And then from there, we were commissioned to do the Vietnam Memorial in Philadelphia. Yeah, it, there's a lot of veterans that deserve their statues uh, to be seen, to be memorialized, you know, realize their legacy. For the colonial figure, uh, definitely looked at past statuary illustrators, um, which I aspired to be, uh, N.C. Wyatt, Norman Rockwell, uh, J.C. Leindecker, Howard Pyle, uh, Dean Cornwell, all these figures. Uh, with the Coast Guard, that was more looking at photographs. Bob Bala's vision for the Air Force was to have a female figure. I really liked his point of view on that. With the Navy, it was sort of that Cracker Jack uniform that you everyone pictures with the Navy. That was easy to find imagery and pull from many images that I've seen. You know, there's so many photographs of sailors in that Cracker Jack uniform. So when the Marine came up of a Native American in the Vietnam era, I immediately knew what I wanted to do on that. And then with the Army, that was, went off of photographs again, just researching what a contemporary uniform is, you know, body armor, plates, guns, knee pads, all, helmet, um, night vision, it was, uh, it was quite a bit of research. The dedication began at 11 a.m. on June 15, 2019. Over 300 guests were in attendance. Along with the Army Band, the Knights of Columbus served as the honor guard. You know, this is beyond what we had envisioned, in my opinion. Just the layout, how prominent it is, where it's come from, it's just amazing. Representing the different time frames, women are represented, uh, the Minuteman, nobody else has a Minuteman. You know, Merchant Marines, um, I think we really did a good job of, you know, catching everybody that serves. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're here. My name's Doug Heckman, and thanks for attending the dedication and unveiling for the Petrie Corner Veterans Monument. We have a number of special guests here today, and I'd like to acknowledge them. Uh, please hold your applause till the end, and um, if you're here and I acknowledge you, please go ahead and raise your hands. I'm going to start out with our guest speaker, Major General Retired Ron Johnson. Our former Attorney General, Mike Bowers, and, and he's also a past Air National Guard uh, Major General Commander, uh, Mike Bowers and his wife, Betty Rose, are here with us. Please raise your hands. Thank you. We have the Japanese Consul General Shinazuka is here in the end. We're glad you're here today. We have the Consul General from Taiwan, General Liu, and his wife. Thank you for being here today. We have Mayor Mike Mason and the City Council here today. Please raise your hands. We have the City Director of Development, Diana Wheeler, here. She's been a great help in the process. If you're here, Diana, please raise your hand. We have the Georgia Department of Veteran Services, Mark Bannister representing them here today. If you're here, Mark, raise your hand. Oh, I see you in the back there, thank you. Uh, we have Doug Smith and the Patriot Guard Riders here today with us. Thank you for being here, Doug and Riders. We've got the Knights of Columbus and we got Cub Pack 575. And finally, we have several World War II veterans that uh, Bob will talk about a little bit later on. But if you're here, please raise your hand, World War II veterans. And with that, let's give a round of applause to everybody.
We're also honored to have the Army National Guard's 116th Army Band here today with us under the direction of Warrant Officer David Proctor. And they'll, they'll now play the National Anthem. Thank you. Uh, Cub Scout five seven Cub Scout Pack five seven five will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. We're honored to have Pastor John Purrington from Simpsonwood United Methodist Church here with us to lead us in an invocation. Would you pray with me as we give thanks on this day? Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We don't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same. A one day we'll spend our sunset years telling our children and our grandchildren what it was once like in the United States of America where people were once free. With that inspiration, it didn't take much for us to get behind this and push it. And I want you to give it a round of applause for everybody that's on the team. And this here. Now I'd like to talk a few minutes to talk about our board and the volunteers that are associated with this day. While I've provided some leadership to this enterprise, there is a lot bigger effort that occurred. While some of the individual players don't think so, they all contributed something very important. If you're on the board of directors, on the city council, or one of the many volunteers, would you please raise your hand and uh, take a round of applause. Your programs, your programs contain a list of the board members, and all of them contributed uh, with design, with guidance on what we should be doing, uh, and in some cases with dollars to put the statues behind us here. And now at this point, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Major General Ron Johnson, U.S. Army, retired. He graduated from West Point in 1976, and he was a combat engineer. He commanded combat engineer units from company through brigade. And I was just talking to him about his brigade command was in Hanau, Germany, which I'm familiar with, but he spent most of his time in Bosnia and uh, Croatia during the war. Uh, he attended Georgia Tech for his master's in operations research, which he then taught at West Point. He served as an aide-de-camp and later as executive officer to the Secretary of the Army, and he commanded the Corps of Engineers Gulf Region Division in 2003-2004 while we were invading Iraq. So, please welcome, would you, uh, Major General Ron Johnson to our podium. What an audience. Well, thank you so much for that kind and appropriately short introduction. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. First of all, uh, happy 244th birthday to your United States Army. I do count it as a real honor to be able to speak at this Veterans Monument Dedication Ceremony. Thank you to all of those who have worked so hard on this monument from its very beginning. Particularly like to recognize my good friend, uh, Bob, Executive Director, for his leadership in the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument Association for both your vision and your perseverance in making this happen. So today we dedicate this site as a sacred place in Peachtree Corners where people will gather to take pictures, where veterans will gather to share experience with each other, or just stand or sit alone to ponder thoughts that they can never share with anyone. Let's use this monument to help us always remember our veterans, to lift that torch, those serving who have served, and to always remember that freedom isn't ever free. Pull right off, guys. <laughs> Here 
There we go. Okay, you can just drop the cross behind you. Okay, the next is our Coast Guard statue. Semper Parades. Go ahead, band, strike up. Coast Guard people, stand up. Do we have any in the audience? Okay, next is the Air Force. Strike up the music, man. Okay, we've got our Air Force fighter pilot. United States Navy. United States Marine Corps. The last of the service sculptures, United States Army. Okay, all the Army people. Oh, look at that. This is our 21st century soldier. Okay, next we'll have the eagle. Unveil the eagle. So I have here the keys to these kiosks and to the flagpoles in the back, which I wish to present to the city of Peachtree Corners, represented by our mayor. Sir, the monument is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much, and we'll take good care of it. Thank okay. you. All right. We invite all veterans or family members of veterans living in Peachtree Corners to add their names to the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument roster. And remember, every Memorial Day and Veterans Day, there will be special events held right here. And you can go to the Peachtree Corners Veterans Monument website to find more information about volunteer opportunities or brick purchases and so much more. I'm Adam Murphy. Thank you for watching.